All right, this is hypo and hypermagnesemia. So first of all, let's go through the levels. The normal range for magnesium is 1.6 to 2.6. All right, so some big functions of magnesium. So I'm just gonna read this little snippet. Magnesium is needed for healthy bones, teeth, nerve, and muscle function and coagulation. Magnesium is beneficial in preventing myocardial infraction, stroke, and osteoporosis. So it plays a big role in our body. And we'll get more into the big things. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so let's talk about hypomagnesemia. So this is seen in patients many times that um, are malnutrition. Um, so they're not getting enough magnesium in their diet. Um, this can be seen with people that have GI problems, GI tract problems, that are on loop diuretics because, you know, um, so one thing to remember is that magnesium is, ex is absorbed through the GI tract and excreted through the kidneys. So if you have any problems with the kidneys, um, and you're not able to, what am I trying to say? Oh yeah, not able to excrete them, obviously you're gonna have a buildup so it's gonna be hyper magnesium mia. But if, um, let's say you're on loop diuretics and you know, you're excreting a lot more, um, then you are at risk for hypomagnesemia. <clears throat> okay. You'll also see this in um, those that have chronic alcohol abuse. Um, people who are chronically who chronically abuse alcohol are at risk for developing hypomagnesemia because of poor nutritional intake and GI malabsorption issues. Decreased absorption of magnesium in the GI tract can form, can, sorry. So decreased absorption can be, can uh, occur because of inadequate dietary intake or um, of food containing magnesium. It could be because, because of diarrhea or damage to the small intestine or malnutrition, like we said. So think of like your patient that has chronic alcohol abuse syndrome, if that's even a thing. Um, think of like your old people that are on loop diuretics. Um, <laughs> anything. Um, that increases urine output. So if that means like um, you have an IV, you have IV fluids going, you're gonna pee more. Um, chemotherapy agents, I think, stimulate increased excretion of magnesium. Okay, so yeah, pretty much anything that increases urine output. Um, also, and then there's certain diuretics, there's chemotherapy agents, there's antibiotics that somehow increased exertion of excretion of magnesium in the urine okay so some things so how they will pre how this will present itself we're gonna think primarily neuromuscular and think the symptoms are it says are associated symptoms of hyperactivity so you'll see muscle weakness cramping tetany Hyperactive reflex, tremors, trousy and chivotic sign. I don't really remember what those are. Um, you also see search, central nervous system symptoms, including disorientation, psychosis, vertigo, irritability, combativeness. Um, you'll see cardiac symptoms, including blood pressure and heart rate. Oh, increases, sorry, in blood pressure, heart rate, um, tachycardia. <laughs> you could see premature ventricular contractions um, and then also anorexia, nausea, vomiting also may be present. Um, also, she has like five picked out um, and in the PowerPoint. So look at your PowerPoint. Okay. You can also see seizures if it's severe enough. All right. So what we're going to do for hypomagnesemia. 
uh, we are going to increase their diet, um, specifically foods high in magnesium, such as whole grain, leafy veg green leafy vegetables, um, there's other ones, nuts, cashews, peas, peanut butter, uh, avocado. Um, also, you can do oral supplements. Um, and then you can also do an IV fluid of magnesium sulfate if oral route is unavailable. Okay. So things to think about when you're giving an IV of magnesium, uh, you want to monitor vital signs for hypotension changes in cardiac rate rhythm um yeah just i think <clears throat> nursing managements so because of you know their risk for cardiac dysrhythmias seizure precautions hyperexcitability you want to be mindful of fall and what's the word initiate fall precautions um, we want to provide patient education regarding foods and of um, high magnesium. Um, patient education regarding. So your um, priority, I think, is going to be patient education uh, and fall risks because, you know, of their weakness and hyperactivity, tremors disorientation, that kind of stuff. Um, and then if they're abusing alcohol, chronically abusing alcohol, we want to refer them to the um, AA programs. Okay. Hypermagnesium is going to be greater than 2.6 milligrams per DL. Um, the most common causes usually over replacement of magnesium deficits and renal sufficiency. So we said that magnesium gets excreted from the kidneys. So if you have problems with your kidneys, then, you know, we won't be able to excrete that um, over. So over replacement of magnesium, usually um, like medications overuse, such as like milk of magnesium and whatnot. If, you know, you're using those excessively, then you're going to obviously have hyper magnesium. Um, <clears throat> again, think older adults. They're at risk for hypermagnesemia because of decreased renal function and use of magnesium containing laxatives and and acids. Um, let's see, in patients whom destruction, soft tissue. Oh, another um, possible cause of hypermagnesium uh, would be destruction of soft tissue because there is, with that, there is a release of intracellular magnesium, but I mean, that's getting pretty specific. Um, just think any disruption of the GI tract can throw off the magnesium levels, um, whether it be like absorption problems or, you know, just uh, injury to the um, intestines. Um, resulted. GI absorption, decreased elimination of magnesium through the GI tract. Increased GI absorption. I don't know where I was going that. Alrighty. Um, clinical manifestations. What will we see? So this is our assessment portion. We will we will see hypotension, dysrhythmias, um, muscle weakness, loss of deep tendon reflexes. So for hypo, we had uh, excitability and for hyper we have loss of deep tendon reflexes because I don't know if I said this earlier but magnesium I think I did alters the effects of calcium on smooth muscles causing them to relax so you know um I think magnesium's good you know just to relax and help you chill out uh, where am I Okay, so think, you know, paralysis, coma, a decrease in respiratory rate. Think, bleh, um, decreased platelet clumping. So you're at an increased risk for bleeding. So those are the things you will see with hyper. Wow, I have a huge headache right now. Okay, <clears throat> treating underlying problem is the biggest, biggest thing for hypermagnesium. Whether it be um, if the GI is not working correctly, um, 
and it's absorbing too much magnesium or um, if it's because of where am I this is not if um you have symptoms that are like you know the um, respiratory symptoms such as a decrease in respiratory rate then you want to you know treat that <laughs> in the setting of severe renal insufficiency or renal failure um, if it's because of renal failure, then we want to um, manage that, such as dialysis. Um, minister of calcium glucose. If you're having symptoms, so basically to treat this, we want to treat the symptoms more or less. So, minister. I don't know where I was going with this. Calcium reverses the effects of magnesium on smooth muscles, resolving symptoms. Okay, you want to give calcium um, in hypermagnesemia uh, because it will reverse the effects of magnesium on the smooth muscle. So if like you're having more smooth muscle problems, give calcium. Alrighty, nursing management continued. Your priority, nurses need to monitor vital signs for signs of hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmias, and respiratory depression. So those are our priorities, you know, ABCs. Um, neurological assessment includes monitoring for changes in the level of consciousness. So basically you just wanna monitor them. Um, because they will be having those, you know, change of level of consciousness and loss of deep tendon reflexes, muscle weakness. Um, so yeah, monitor. And then older adults need to be provided with patient education. So another thing is patient education is another big thing. Um, we want to um, teach the older adults that, um, or anyone that's maybe abusing, um, magnesium containing supplements or what not maybe not abusing because it said laxatives but um magnesium containing laxatives but more like you know we just want to limit use of magnesium containing okay teach about that yeah i don't know sorry um yeah so then identify also we want to educate them about uh, foods containing a lot of magnesium. Maybe we want to limit those so this doesn't happen again. So it says identification. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. In patients at risk for developing hypermagnesemia due to renal insufficiency or renal failure, educating regarding education regarding identification of high magnesium containing foods and over-the-counter medications is important. So yeah, thanks for watching.